This steer axle is for use in the American and France ladder chief currently being built. And the reason I didn't use the stock kit part, shown at top of the photo, is that the way it's molded, it's quite difficult to make that part steerable. I do have a number of steer axles available from Ravel's snap kit series of Pete 359 and Kenworth W900 conventionals, which I buy for parts on a regular basis. The 10 speed shift lever in the Pete is especially nicely done, and the mirror heads also have classification lamp detail molded in. These are also a good source of caterpillar engines, air horns, and the lubrifier and air cleaner are, are also well molded. Start the process by drilling holes for the kingpins while the axle is still molded solid. Drill from the top about halfway through, then drill up from the bottom of the spindle to complete the hole. This minimizes the chance of any misalignment causing the kingpin hole to be off center. Now drill a series of small holes in this location to help separate the spindle from the axle beam itself. I use a number 76 drill which is 021 diameter and one reason that the snap kit axle works well for this operation is that there's a nicely molded recess here to guide where you're drilling. Using a combination of fine tooth razor saw and sharp number 11 hobby knife blade, carefully separate the spindles from the axle beam itself. This picture shows the initial rough cuts before any cleanup work has been done. By the time the spindles have been cut away, there's not a lot of material left between the kingpin holes and the end of the axle beam. I've added a piece of 125 half round styrene strip to bulk up this area. I used half round strip for convenience and for the rounded shape, but any piece of styrene strip will work. Here are the pieces seen from the front of the axle beam. Again, leave everything extra long glued in place over size and trimmed to final length later. It's much easier than trying to cut and fit exact size pieces. Initial trial assembly with 032 brass wire kingpins. At this stage of the assembly, the parts are a little bit sloppy because of the width of the saw curve and extra material that was removed during cleanup of the parts. This is addressed by adding styrene shims as required here I've added 10 thou on the top and bottom of the axle beam at both ends. The exact dimensions for your model may differ, just measure accordingly and add shims to suit. Next item we'll work on is the tie rod. This is the stock snap kit part and what I've done here is I've drilled out the tie rod ends using a 1 32nd diameter drill. Cut the tie rod ends free and file them down to reduce the thickness of the end. The unmodified part is at the top of the picture and the modified part is shown at the bottom. Holding these parts can be challenging but this job is made easier by using a suitable pin vise. One with an assortment of different size collets is the most useful because this is adaptable to a wide range of different material sizes. With the tie rod ends complete all we have to create now is the center portion. Another parts box tie rod is shown here for comparison. I've used a piece of 1 16th thin wall tube from the main body and two small slices of 3 seconds tube for the collars on either end. The two outer ends of the tie rod are made from short pieces of 332 styrene tube and 364 styrene rod which fits nicely inside the 1 16th thin wall brass tube. Here are the assembled components with the 364 styrene rod glued into the sections of tube and the two short brass collars soldered to either end of the 1 16th tube. I've also glued two short pieces of styrene strip onto these and added bolt head castings to simulate the clamps which on the real truck would hold the tie rod adjustment. Spindles are permanently assembled to the axle beam and have substituted 1 16th brass rod in place of the snap pins provided in the kit. I've also taken the steering linkage attachment point and shortened it to more closely match the stock kit location on the LaFrance model. From the scale model hardware collection, I'm using 0090 screws to attach the tie rods. 
This closer view shows a styrene disc, punched from tensile block styrene, glued in place above the kingpin hole. By doing this top and bottom, the kingpin is trapped in place and can still pivot freely. I've also used an 025 styrene rivet to represent a grease fitting. From the bottom, the other pair of styrene discs holding the kingpins in place can be seen, and the tie rod itself is attached with 0090 nuts. I've also used a small drop of CA glue as a form of Loctite, which is probably not necessary on a display model, but I have had some of these fasteners vibrate loose after a couple of hundred miles going down the road to a show or other event. Modifying the snap kit axle to a steerable configuration was not that difficult to do and only took a little bit of time in the course of one afternoon. If you have some of these snap kits in your collection, they're a great source of parts to make steerable axles for other kits. Thanks for watching this little project. A future video will show the installation, however that will have to wait until the frame and front suspension of the ladder chief are a little bit further along.